pleasant good morning and once again we welcome you to mornings in the word with bishop t it's always a privilege of mine to be able to come to you on a morning and to share in the word of god amen it's a blessing to me and i trust that it will be also a blessing for you we want to encourage you to to uh, go into the comments and and make your comments we encourage you to subscribe to our page amen we would love to have you visit with us as a matter of fact on sunday coming uh, we will be having our friends and family day at our church on warden road that's the warden road center of worship and for those of you who are close by in the vicinity or those of you who would like to, to take a little road trip and drive down come visit us on sunday it's our friends and family day amen we would love to have you with us it starts at nine o'clock in the morning amen and if you're coming from far and you came in and you visit just come and let me know who you are uh, amen and we will be so glad to have you with us on sunday coming as we continue on the topic no other way we read from the book of mark chapter 14 verse 35 and 36 and it says going a little further he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible the hour might pass from him abba father he said everything is possible for you take this cup from me yet not what i will but what you will one of the biggest questions we said that is asked is why did jesus have to die and our first reason jesus had asked for another way jesus had asked for another way and secondly we said that jesus had to die because death was the only way and we asked the question well why was death the only way and we said it was needed to show the extent of our sin amen hallelujah and then we said that jesus had to die because it was needed to show the extent of god's love for us amen and so we said yesterday in the first part jesus would be dealing with the elements of things that when he left heaven he left that perfect condition of heaven to come to earth that is how much god love us to send his son amen to this sin cursed earth amen and he will be leaving the harsh uh, the, the, the the beautiful place of heaven to come down to this earth and deal with elements of uh, things like harsh weather and conditions and to enjoy the sights and songs and smells of our imperfect world and, and he will have to deal with being surrounded by imperfect people some of whom would end up mistreating him and secondly as we start this morning he would be laying aside his supremacy and worship you see in heaven jesus was worshiped and he was adored by the angels but in coming to earth, that adoration and worship would, would, would be laid aside and replaced uh, by, with being looked at as just another human being. And instead of being adored by all, he would be hated by many. You see, Jesus' status in heaven didn't change. He was still preeminent, but he wouldn't uh, be treated as such on earth by most people. And in taking on human form, amen, he would have to deal with physical limitation. He would have to deal with physical pain and suffer weakness through things like hunger and thirst. He would deal with raw emotion and endure strong temptations. It, in all points, he was tempted like as we are. And Jesus cried out, I thirst. Amen. He had these, 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 these physical things that, that human has. So, so just in Jesus coming to our world, we can see the love and sacrifice of both the Father and the Son. Amen? This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us. You see, true love is expressive. True love is sacrificial. In 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 5 says that love is not self-seeking. 
God's love for us is not reciprocal. Uh, uh, it, it, it's not based on us loving him first or even in, in us loving him back. God loving us is not contingent on us loving him. It's not altered by how much love that we show him. God's love, amen, is at its fullest even for those who hate him. Therefore, God's love for us is not self-serving. It's not selfish. It's not dependent on getting something in return. What God wants in return is our salvation. So the motive for God's love is our benefit. And that's what sacrificial love is all about. Not seeking anything for oneself. And that was Jesus' life. He said in Matthew chapter uh, 20, I think it is, and verse 28, that he did not come to be served, but to serve. He laid down his life for us. First John chapter 3 and verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. And also in John 3, 16, the, the verse that everybody knows, we see the love of the Father. Where he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And here in 1 John 3, 16, we see the love of Jesus. And I don't think it was a coincidence, to, coincidence rather, to have these things stated in John 3, 16 and 1 John 3, 16. How do we know what, is, what love is? The father sacrificed the son and the son sacrificed his life. Jesus gave his all every day, brethren. For the benefit of others. He came to serve and die for sinners. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God didn't send Jesus to those who love him. He sent him to those who were his enemies. <coughs> Jesus didn't die for those who were pure. He died for those who were impure. He died for those who didn't care about him. He died for those who didn't love him. He died for those who didn't serve him. He died for those who were against him, who hated him, who wanted him dead. And this is the full extent of love that is to die for your enemy. God sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for sin. What does atoning sacrifice mean? Some translations use the term propitiation, but Jesus died for his enemies. In reality, because of our sin, that's what we all are. We are his enemies. Once you were alienated from God, in Colossians 1.21 says, once you were alienated from God and were enemies in God's mind because of your evil behavior. Because God is holy, he must separate himself from what is unholy. And that's why we are separated from him. Alienated means separated. We are not connected to God. We, we, we cannot please God. Even though God loves us, he hates sin. Sin is the enemy. Amen. Therefore, we are his enemy because of our sin and the evil behavior that stems uh, from it. In our sinful nature, we oppose God because God hates evil. He treats it with divine contempt. So because we are sinners, God's wrath towards sin is upon us consequentially. So is his judgment. And that's where Jesus comes in. The wrath God has toward our sin, God projected onto Jesus. In, in, in a minimized way, it's, it's, it's kind of like if you did something wrong and, and your father got upset, but your brother stepped in and took the punishment for you. You broke the window. You're playing cricket in the road and you bat the ball and the ball break the window. But your brother take the licks for you. Amen? Jesus being our atoning sacrifice means he took upon himself God's wrath towards sin. And that's why Jesus cried out. To his father when he was on the cross why have you forsaken me and that's the moment when jesus took our sins upon himself and in so doing 
incur the wrath of the Father. You know, in 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 uh, I think it's First Corinthians chapter five and verse twenty one. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When Jesus took our sins upon himself, God had to look at Jesus differently. And as God was repulsed by sin, he had to be repulsed by his son. As God would separate himself from sin, he separated himself from his only son. Although Jesus knew this moment was coming, he did not know how it was going to feel until it actually happened. Amen. Amen. And we will end it here this morning. And we will continue it at uh, uh, another time. Amen. On Monday, possibly. But we look forward to having you joining us on Sunday morning at 9 o'clock for our friends and family day at the Warden Road Center of Worship. That's on Warden Road in Point Fourteen. It will be nice to have you. Come, visit us. Bishop T, love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>